This is the digital music trends coverage of South by Southwest 2014, an interview with the Kjartan Schlechte, head of strategy at WIMP. DMT's coverage of South by Southwest is brought to you by Omniphone, the leading B2B cloud music provider powering global music services including Sony Music Unlimited, Guvera, Rara and Sirius XM. Find out more on Omniphone.com and by Music Graph, the world's first knowledge engine for music, available as a consumer app and as a graph API for developers. Check out MusicGraph.com or Developer.MusicGraph.com. Hello everyone and welcome to the Digital Music Trends coverage of South by Southwest 2014. It's the last day. I'm here with uh, uh, Kjartan Schletta uh, from uh, the company WIMP. So hi Kjartan, I hope I did uh, your name, surname justice. <laughs> close, close enough. Close enough. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. And so uh, we're going to talk about WIMP. I haven't had a feature on the company in uh, probably like a good two and a half, almost three years now. So it's, it's due. It's definitely overdue, uh, yeah. uh, freshen up. So uh, please, uh, first of all, give me, uh, give us uh, an, outlo- an outline of what WIMP is for maybe uh, US listeners of uh, listeners from territories where you're not present yet. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a streaming service. Um, that's a well-known category by now, of course. Uh, so I will try to focus more on how we are unique from the other services. Because you, ha- you have the 23, 25 million songs, you have the offline, but that is all. Uh, every service has that now. So um, what we're focusing on is great editorial. So we have local editorial teams in every country. So if you open the clients in Norway versus Sweden versus Germany, it's different content-wise. Um, we're currently live in five countries, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Germany and Poland, and of course looking to, uh, to grow. Um, compared to other streaming services, we are stock listed. Yeah. Uh, meaning that we have a different growth strategy than the more VC funded companies. We sure. have to have a more uh, sensible growth. So we don't grow at the same speed, but we we use a lot of time to, to understand the market and build up strong local editorial. Sure. So that's one thing. Uh, uh, other thing is we just launched video, music videos. Oh, great. That's the f- first service. Uh, we're launching, I have already uh, launched uh, in beta magazine integration. So you can actually read, listen and watch I- in the client. And we, um, Octo- in October last year, launched a high fee tier offering lossless streaming at double the price, which has been wow. uh, hugely successful uh, uh, for us. Um, so there's a lot of ground to cover. So uh, first of all, yeah, let's, yeah. let's talk at the international side of things. Uh, uh, so uh, you are now live in, in, in several countries. Uh, and uh, so what has, has been your approach there? So you were talking about the fact that you're, you're, you're not VC funded and so you have, to, uh, you have to have a different growth strategy. In that sense, uh, you don't have a freemium offering or do you? And how, how does that work? Uh, no, we currently don't uh, run with a freemium. We have yeah. tested it. Yeah. Uh, we had a, a freemium offering live in Denmark, Sweden uh, and Germany uh, and found that for our type of service and our type of customers that didn't really uh, work for us. Right. So we have now fo- focused more on the uh, premium plus position, offering actually higher price tiers than lower. Yeah. Um, that said, we are uh, about to launch a couple of initiatives in the marketplace that are aiming at uh, like the, the low threshold users. But the traditional freemium model with stream as much as you want for uh, forever, for nothing, uh, that is not the route we're going down. No. Yeah. Yeah, and so uh, looking at uh, the premium side of things, uh, how do you acquire customers uh, primarily? Do you have a particular strategy on that front? Of course, and, and uh, as I said, the streaming category is now well established. In Norway, 78% of uh, recorded music sales are now digital, So, uh, and streaming is most of that. So this is a, a well, well established category. So we don't have to, at least in our core territories, don't have to educate the users anymore. They know the service, they know the category. So now we're focusing more on how do we position ourselves compared to the competition? And uh, we do that with uh, the bullets I mentioned before. Yeah. Uh, trying to be a more premium service than the others. So uh, we're, we're trying to, and we've always done this, trying to take what you loved with a physical record store yeah. and bring that into the cloud. So it's not an empty algorithm kind of uh, uh, impersonal. It's, it's, there's pe- you, it's people meeting people talking about music. So when it comes to looking at, uh, for example, carrier partnerships or integrations on uh, home devices, uh, uh, what is your stance uh, and uh, have you got any deals? On any uh, as I said, uh, that's part of the hygiene factor. So yeah. all devices, and especially with Hi-Fi, uh, the lossless here, you have to be on the Sonos, uh, the Blue Sounds, and the, the, uh, the 
nuts, every device, and now cars soon, um, and of course all uh, mobile devices. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah sure. And so, uh, looking at uh, where you're seeing consumers uh, uh, utilize uh, the service the most. Uh, so, is it always mobile devices? And if so, do you have your own app? Uh, uh, how, how does the service work on a, a mobile? Yeah, um, and I, I would imagine this is true for all services as well. Uh, if I should be very, very black and white or uh, tabloid, um, usage is all mobile, and a lot of the usage which is mobile is offline. So uh, that's by far the most important uh, device uh, or device type for us. Desktop is still uh, important as part of the mix, uh, but it's not. Well, we, that's not where we see uh, conversion being driven from. So it's it's a need to have, but not the end destination for the users. And we see uh, the more devices uh, the user have uh, connected to his Wimp account, the longer he stays in the service. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, sure. I've seen a, a couple of reports recently talking about how, uh, especially in Norway and uh, in Denmark, they've seen a, a slight decline in the uh, usage of local catalog uh, as opposed to international ones. So, yeah. uh, what are you doing on that front? Are you are you working to help local artists to get? Yeah, uh, and uh, that's true, uh, especially so in Norway. Yeah. Uh, the latest figures points to between 12 and 15 percent. Wow. which is dramatic. In the heydays of physical, it was 50. We can never get back to that because then you control the whole ecosystem, but 12 to 15 is too low. Yeah. That said, that's the average for a, for a country. Our market share is between 35 and 45, so in, in uh, uh, on, on local. So on our WIMP Hi-Fi tier, it's, it's close to 50% actually. So we perform better uh, than the competition, and that's because we are a local service, right? Yeah. But uh, it's still a problem for the market as a whole. 12 to, 12 to 15 is too low. So what we actually presented here at uh, South by Southwest yesterday in a panel uh, uh, via a research partner uh, called the Clouds and Concerts we work with is an alternative way to settle in streaming. So currently the, 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 uh, the settlement model is you take all money, divide it on all streams, and then you get a market share. And we uh, have been discussing now, and what we're discussing last uh, afternoon here in, in South by, what if we settled each user individually? Right. Uh, and that has some interesting effects. One of them is that uh, local market share increases by 13%. Yeah, and of course I actually spoke to, it was Oleg that was driving, I can't remember the name of the researcher that was driving. Arch. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, they was driving their initiative. I'm gonna catch up with them hopefully soon. Uh, yeah, you should because they're doing some very interesting research within streaming. It's not our research, but we have uh, made the data available, and we think it's important to be a part of the discussion because yeah. uh, streaming is such an advanced uh, uh, category now in the Nordics. So we have to be able to drive it f further, and I yeah. think this is an interesting discussion. How do we settle? Yeah, absolutely. And so, uh, looking at uh, music videos, so how have you introduced them as part of your service? We've seen, you know, for, for example, what was it? Um, uh, I think it was uh, Xbox Music that recently introduced videos as part of the Xbox, uh, Xbox Correct. Live experience. Correct. Is it a similar take? Yeah, uh, and I would say that all services, um, if not this year, very, very soon will have videos. So it's, it's, it's going to be a hygiene factor. That's awesome. What we're doing with videos uh, currently, we have introduced an Android client, uh, which is a more curated uh, experience, editorial yep. experience. Uh, over the summer, we will deeply integrate videos in all of our, uh, all of our clients. And, and that means that uh, you, as a user, if it's a video track or audio track, you won't really notice. Uh, they will perform in the same way. But of course, you have the added uh, effect of being able of to visuals. watch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. you could imagine a playlist where you have both audio and video tracks intertwined, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I've been talking to a lot of services this week, and uh, all of them are looking at uh, dashboard integration. So are you, are you working with any car manufacturers right now to see how uh, WIMP can be integrated in, in the dashboard? You mean cars? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Uh, we have the discussions with all of the big players. and. Uh, I would say that especially our uh, high fee tier is very interesting for them because that's a service they can't get anywhere else, right? Yeah. So uh, yeah, we have uh, 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 we have more requests than we can handle actually. So yeah. it's uh, very exciting. I think that's exciting times. I think that's one of the most dominant uh, trends this year. 
is yeah. is the total integration in all of our devices. Like every every device is going online soon, and music will be a part of that. Yeah. Perhaps not in your refrigerator, but in your car, in your home stereo, and so forth. Uh, for sure. Maybe maybe even in our refrigerator. Who knows? Who Perhaps. Knows? <laughs> I've seen a what well, did I saw a connected uh, slow cooker. This, yeah. Uh, CS, yeah. We're, so that was, we're uh, launching Wimp Hi-Fi on that <laughs> next year. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And so, uh, looking at uh, you know, uh, the company is uh, is uh, evolving, uh, 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 you know, organically in the sense that you know you're trying to be sustainable in yes. the way that you're, that you're evolving. Yes. So, uh, when you approach uh, the possibility of international expansion and looking at a new territory, what are the characteristics you're looking for in a new territory to say, okay, well, yeah, I think we should expand there. It's the usual metrics, population, uh, disposable income, broadband penetration, uh, uh, smartphone penetration and so forth. But we also try to look at uh, the maturity of the market. Uh, uh, we are, for instance, in Germany, and you could argue that it's too early to be in Germany because it's a very, very, very immature market. And our service is more of an advanced premium plus service. Yeah. So we also, we also tend to look f uh, towards markets where streaming or other streaming uh, players are already there and have taken the cost of educating the market because we bring something different and can live next to the other services. Like Deezer and Spotify will probably kill, one of them will kill the other because they're doing the exact same thing. Uh, we're trying to uh, to live uh, next to them and, yeah. and offer something different. So you were talking about curation. So how do you deal with the curation problem? Uh, we've been hearing a lot about this. Yeah, here it's at one of the topics for this year, right? Yeah. We, we we deal with it with humans. So uh, we have algorithms uh, working, of course, uh, behind the scenes. But every uh, uh, every um, uh, piece of content or piece of music uh, that is presented to the user via the clients is picked by someone. Yeah. Um, so that's the route we're going. It's kind of expensive. Uh, you have to hire a lot of uh, skilled people. Uh, it's kind of slow because you can't grow. In that you, you, we, we couldn't launch in 100 countries, right? Because yeah. we need to be um, uh, tailored to each one. Um, but that also means that you can, you can go to each individual label that is relevant in that country and make deals and make sure that you have all the local catalog as well. Yes. Yes, and, and we're seeing some launches that have been, yeah, we launched in 100 countries, uh, but it's not actually launched. You can access it and you can go to the website, but uh, the, the content is not tailored to the country um, and the editorial is not tailored to the country. So um, we have chosen a different route. Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, when you do go to a new country and start speaking to labels, uh, is there quite a lot of education that needs to be done around uh, uh, you know, what you, who you are and what you're doing? Not anymore, no, no. We are, uh, Wimp Music is, is one of the top 10 players globally. So we are on all the, uh, we, we are being discussed in all the meetings at, at the label side, so they know us very, very well. Yeah. And, and the fact is that most of the negotiations are not with a single country, but from the central hub, London or, or New York. So uh, I, I would say that the, the music labels or the music industry has come a long way in making it easier to grow. Uh, so that's not longer an obstacle. Rights management, however, is that's a, a problem. pain in the ass. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and we've seen, uh, I had a chat yesterday uh, about the fact that the Global Repertoire Database uh, project uh, is having a bit of a difficult time right now. I'm so. not surprised. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, apparently nobody wants to pick up the tab. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. yeah, that's a nightmare. And uh, the, um, what the European Union tried to do has, has actually just made it more complex since they're yeah. now competing with uh, each other. Yeah. Yeah, sure. So, so. That, that is and that is an interesting topic, and I and uh, but I don't have the solution, and I think no one has. Uh, yeah. But I think <laughs> that complexity um, hinders innovation. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And we're seeing a lot of different approaches here in the US. You know, there's a lot of different uh, points of view as to how things should should work. Uh, uh, on, on the product side, so sorry, uh, we're talking about uh, uh, mobile. So do you have your your own proprietary apps on mobile as well? Yeah. Uh, Android. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, iOS, uh, Windows. Yeah. Yes, as stated, hygiene factor. Yeah. yeah, and uh, on the radio side, a lot of c c companies that are working in streaming are uh, producing uh, 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 radio channels so people can listen to an endless stream of music. Yeah, we do that as well. You do that yeah, as well, and so. that's typically where the algorithms come in. So Great. you can start from uh, a playlist or a track or an album, and you can create a radio station out of that. Uh, yeah. 
And that will be very interesting to see with videos, because I, I think with music videos, there's a huge untapped market in presenting them in an editorial uh, manner. Yeah. So, um, uh, the best uh, videos from a certain director, for instance. So, yeah. I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to dive into music videos and, and present that in a fresh manner to the audience, not just rows of content, but curated and, and made fun. Yeah. yeah, I mean, videos is going to be very interesting to see how that plays out in the home as well. Uh, so, do, do you have like integration with some of the, the, the boxes or uh, uh, yeah. things that are working in the I, home? Yeah, and th that's a very interesting part of the market now because we see that a lot of uh, these uh, Connect 2 devices are coming, like the Chromecast and, and, and others. And that's a very interesting domain to send videos to the big screen. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so for sure, uh, everything that is connected to entertainment in the living room is high on everyone's agenda, I would imagine. Yeah. yeah. And finally, you know, you, you, you are in countries where streaming penetration is almost uh, at it's, you know, at the biggest it can get. Essentially, you know, uh, you know, it feels like uh, this year certainly streaming will conquer the vast majority of the market, and at that point, there's going to be very little room for expansion. So I don't agree. I don't, don't agree. agree. No. Okay, cool. So in Norway now we have two years with total growth. Uh, uh, digital uh, market share 78 percent and streaming 65 or something um, I believe uh, there is still room for growth uh, on two accounts uh, one is of course there's a user segment that hasn't adopted streaming yet and that's the older population and uh, as this get into into more and more devices through their uh, broadband connections through their cell phone uh, 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 dealers uh, we can reach them uh, that's one thing. The other one uh, is price. I yeah. believe uh, that there is, I don't believe, I've seen it. There is a segment, if that's 10 or 20 or 30 percent, that's too early to conclude on. But there is a sizable segment that are willing to pay more for more. And I think that's one of the, uh, the price point was, was the correct one, 9.99 or 99 in Norway, to get mass uh, penetration. Um, but we have lost the entire uh, usage group uh, from the physical dates that used to spend thousands of kroners or hundreds of pounds each month on, on uh, CDs or vinyl because you can't pay more than 9.99 so I believe there's a huge potential to drive uh, parts of the market to a higher price tier and that's what we've done now with uh, WIMP HiFi which is double the price and there's a double digit penetration of our users already so, wow. so I, I believe in Norway we can get back to uh, the same amount of revenue as in the peak year of 99-2000, the, right. the year uh, Napster launched, and that in Norway is one uh, billion, approximately. And if we can do that, I think we have done something that no one dared to believe in yeah. just a couple of years ago. That's incredible. So yeah, essentially, the growth is not, you know, we don't have to look at the current market as the only potential market. No, we have because to look at the no, because that. the fact is that we have one price model in the marketplace, and that's, that's all we see. And if you look at the telco, they typically have a multitude of tiers uh, speaking to different usage groups. And you will see that in streaming as well. That's great. And so just uh, just uh, as a technicality for, yeah. the, for the listeners, yeah, yeah. Uh, what kind of uh, uh, streaming rates, bit rates uh, do, do you stream at uh, with a high five? Uh, it's lossless. Oh, it's lossless. Great. It's lossless, yeah. So awesome. it's the uncompromised file directly from the record label. So there's nothing done with it. It's, uh, it's as as intended by the artists. That's great. Yeah. I'm sure like the, the fact that Neil Young got launched his Pono campaign as well. Yeah. Even if it's a different service, it will definitely raise awareness. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm curious about uh, the service and the name. <laughs> That's yeah. another story. Uh, <laughs> Uh, 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 it, it might have some kind of appeal uh, on a global scale, but I, I can't see it, at least the Nordics, uh, having uh, a lot of penetration because we kind of offer the same, just yeah. just uh, with 25 million tracks instead exactly. of the limited I mean, catalog. But I think it's very interesting that it's more focus on higher quality music files. Yeah, that's absolutely. good. No, that, that's a good thing. And I yeah. think, I mean, I was the biggest skeptic of, of, of Pono uh, before they actually launched, but now I understand, you know, they're going to, uh, you know, target a very small section of the population, people that have very high-end speakers at home and yeah. they can use them. Because, you know, at my house, I don't have any, I don't have any five grand speakers to no, actually no. listen to 192 kilohertz tracks on. So, exactly. you know, <laughs> so I, me, I, I want to uh, hear the difference. Exactly. <laughs> I welcome the initiative. Uh, I don't see it really um working 
Yeah. But uh, the initiative is, is welcomed. Definitely. Mm. And so looking forward to the next uh, couple of years, you know, what's, what's the most thing that's exciting you the most about uh, the growth of WEMP uh, right now? Uh, it's uh, if I should pick one thing, it's uh, it's uh, hi-fi, lossless streaming connected to the explosion in connected devices, because uh, hi-fi really comes into its own uh, in the living room, and with the Sonos and and, and uh, competitors, people are now increasingly having uh, expensive uh, hi-fi equipment at home. So for us, I mean, if, if, if if I can pick one thing. That will be where I see the biggest potential for growth right now, uh, both in revenues and, and in penetration. It's fantastic. And if people wanted to check out more about WIMP, of course, it's uh, WIMP.com. WIMPmusic.com. WIMPmusic.com. Correct. Uh, perfect. And you can find everything out. They have a, a very well-maintained uh, 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 press release uh, list as well. So you can read about all the latest news that they have uh, over that's there, correct. too. That's And uh, I can be contacted directly, of course. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks so much. Uh, you can see behind me that they are starting to take the whole place apart. So I should probably stop recording right now. <laughs> but uh, no, thanks so much for your time. It was a pleasure. And uh, thanks for tuning in to the DM empty coverage of South by Southwest. It's been a pleasure covering the conference. You can find out everything on digitalmusictrends.com or on youtube.com slash digitalmusictrends.